commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak, and so act, as those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply your bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Amen. Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealous. 
else that they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Can you think of all the different ways that you might 
initially describe yourself. And now I want you to turn the page and see if you can go a little bit deeper. I mean, I think if most of us spent a little time, we could go back quite a way in our history. I grew up in Round Hill. Big deal. Except that for generations of presses, we grew up in Round Hill. It was a strange thing. When I came to Halifax, I thought I would find pages and pages of presses in the phone book because there was several columns of presses in the Annapolis Royal phone book. Turned out, I came to Halifax, there was one. Why? Because presses moved to Round Hill and they never left for, for a long time. So I thought, okay, so presses were in Round Hill. But if I picked that, that scab a little bit, I discovered, oh, there's more history to that. The Cresses, that was my family lineage, came from the eastern seaboard of the United States, and guess what? They came up and took the farms that were the farms of the Acadian people who had been expelled. That's a part of history I didn't know until I was in my 30s, and I think probably many of the folks that I grew up with never knew that history. It's not one that we share. Why would we? It's embarrassing. We're part of something that, that we look at as a shameful act now. Just a couple weeks ago, we celebrated Acadian culture around the world. I have to acknowledge I'm a part of that because my family benefited from the hard work of those Acadian settlers. Can you think back in your history and come to those places where you recognize perhaps now you're in a place of privilege? Or perhaps at one point in your past, you were a part of a people who were a people of privilege. Maybe you don't find yourself in that position anymore. I think ultimately, if we all dig back far enough, we'll find stories within our own stories where we were both people who were reliant on the mercies and generosity of others times when we were people of privilege who had an abundance to share. Now, I don't know where you find yourself on that pendulum today, but today's scriptures remind us that no matter where you find yourself, we all find an even playing ground if we go back to God, because God sees us all as God's children. And even if we might be tempted like Jesus was in today's scripture to not pay attention to the needs of others or to just sort of sit comfortably in a place of privilege, today's scriptures remind us that it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're the son of God or me, your old me and you, we are all called to come back to that foundational truth that all people, all people around the world, no matter what religious or cultural background, what orientation or history, we are children of God. What a gift. What does it mean to you if you were writing in your book and describing yourself as a child of God? I'm hoping that that would put a smile on your face. I'm hoping that that would bring a realization to your heart and mind that you are loved and cherished. And if you can do that, then you can allow the teachings of the rest of the scriptures from today to give your heart an awareness that will convict you whenever you're with an, um, another whether they're somebody that's had generations of their families here in Canada, or whether they're a person who can literally count their Canadian experience in days. But if you can acknowledge they too are a child of God with the same rights and privileges as each and every one of us, then hope that you could open your heart like Jesus was called to do today with the Syrophoenician woman and show that loving care 
Because in that second reading that Anne let us in, it says that we truly are blessed to be children of God, but that it gives us a responsibility to care for the other. And if we're not doing that, if we're just saying, oh, God bless you, and sending people on their way, even though you might know that they're hungry, or that you might know that they're struggling with housing, or whatever else, maybe just loneliness. We need to do what we can. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't feel confident that I can stick my fingers in somebody's ears, spit on my hands and touch their tongue, and and heal profound disease or illness. Although the scriptures tell us if we have faith, we can do this and more. But the scriptures call us to do what we can. And that's unique to each and every one of us. It's unique, as unique as the vast variety of children of God that inhabit this planet. That's how unique your gift is. God calls you his child. And because of that, God calls you to share the special gifts that God created in each one of us to share with the other. You know, we've been waiting 2,000 years for this transformational teaching that Jesus brought us to change the world. I can only imagine Jesus waiting for each one of us to recognize that we are an integral part of that change. That change that if we took our simple gifts, acknowledged ourselves, whether we're in a place of privilege or a place of need, as a child of God, called to do God's work in the world, wow, what a mighty change this planet would see. So, next time you walk down the street, and you see someone who maybe you don't relate to, or maybe you don't uh, know their history, or you can tell perhaps that maybe Canada is serving home, I hope you look at them and smile and say, there's a child of God. And I hope it gives your heart the bravery and courage to love like Jesus, to reach out a welcoming hand and say, hi, I live up the street. Are you new around here? Or maybe don't say that and just say, what's your name? My name's Anne. Sorry, Anne, I was looking right at you. It just came out of my mouth. And I know you walk your street and I know you know the folks on it. You know, we don't know what those simple acts of kindness, the generosity of just sharing something simple like our name or that we live in the neighborhood, those are gifts that can be transformational. And if somebody hints that they can use help with something, let it convict your heart. And step out, step out in bravery and recognize that, no, maybe you can't do it alone. In fact, I can almost guarantee you can't fix their problem. But with God's help, together, working as a family of God, we can change the world.
Additionally, we've been asked to pray for Reverend Lorraine Trapp Street, sorry, uh, whose son David Street um, passed away quite suddenly yesterday. So we have just continued to hold Lorraine and um, David's family, Michelle, his wife, and son Grayson in our hearts as they start the long uh, and difficult mourning process of this son. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites us to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to exchange the peace and come to safe way. Thank you, everyone.
who are generous in works of love. Therefore, we raise our voices to you in praise, to proclaim the glory of your name.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We eat and drink as one body, for we all share in one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God.